times the quantity of x, quantity x plus h minus 7 plus quantity square root of x minus 7 as h approaches to 0. After that, we can now cancel the unlike terms. So we cancel x, negative x, negative 7, and positive 7. After that, we can now get, have the answer of limit of h over h quantity of square root of quantity x plus x plus h plus minus 7 plus square root of x minus 7 after that we can now cancel h because we have h in the denominator after that we can get the limit of 1 over square root of x plus h minus 7 plus square root of x minus 7 as h approaches to 0 after that we need to substitute h to 0 since h approaches to 0. So we can have limit of 1 over square root of x plus 0 minus 7 plus square root of x minus 7 as h approaches to 0. And the final answer would be f prime of x is equals to 1 over 2 square root of x minus 7. So we have another rational example of the derivative using the limit process. So we have f of x is equals to x squared plus 5 over x plus 2. So again, we can get the derivative of this equation using the formula f of x is equals to f quantity x plus h minus f of x over h. Here we have limit of x plus quantity of x plus h squared plus 5 over quantity of x plus h plus 2 minus x squared plus 5 over x plus 2 over h. So as you can see, we substitute x with x plus h, and then we subtracted the f of x, which is x squared plus 5 over x plus 2, and then over h. Then, we need to find the LCD of these terms. So we have the LCD of quantity of x plus h plus 2 and the quantity of x plus 2. So, here we have limit of quantity of x plus h squared plus 5 times the quantity of x plus 2 minus quantity of x squared plus 5 times the quantity of x plus h plus 2 over quantity of x plus h plus 2 times the quantity of x plus 2 over h. So as you can see, we divided this denominator here and we have x plus 2 left and then we, we multiplied it by this denominator. So we come up with these terms and then we divided this denominator here. So we have quantity of x plus h plus 2 left and then we multiply with the numerator. So we have this resulting answer. After that, we need to expand these terms using the Pascal triangle or the binomial theorem. So we have the resulting answer, limit of x cubed plus 2x squared plus 2x squared h plus 4xh plus x h squared plus 2h squared plus 5x plus 10 minus x cubed minus x squared h minus 2x squared minus 2x squared h minus 2x h squared minus 4x h minus x h squared minus h cubed minus 2h squared minus 5x minus 5h minus 10 over quantity of x plus h plus 2 times the quantity of x plus 2 over h. So now, we can cancel out unlike terms. We have x plus 3 and x minus 3, 2x squared h and negative 2x squared h, negative 2x squared and positive 2x squared. We have negative 4xh and positive 4xh. We have positive 10, negative 10 positive 5x, negative 5x, positive 2h squared, negative 2h squared, negative xh squared, and positive xh squared, 
and we have the remaining terms which are negative x squared h, negative 2xh squared, and negative h cubed. And also, negative 5h. After that, we need to see what is the common variable in the remaining terms. So we can see that they both contain h, which means we can factor out h. So we have the remaining terms, which are limit of x, limit of negative x squared h minus 2x h squared minus h cubed minus 5h over the quantity of x plus h plus 2 times the quantity of x plus 2 over h as h approaches to 0. And now, we factor out h. So we have h times the quantity of negative x squared minus 2xh minus h squared minus 5 over the quantity of x plus h plus 2 times the quantity of x plus 2 over h. So as you can see, we have h in the numerator and we have h in the denominator and that means that we can cancel them out. So now, we have negative x squared minus 2xh minus h squared minus 5 over the quantity of x plus h plus 2 times the quantity of x plus 2. And after that, we need to substitute the value of x, h, I mean into 0 since h approaches to 0. So we have limit of negative x squared minus 2x times 0, cancel out, minus quantity of 0 squared minus 5 over x plus 0 plus 2 times the quantity of x plus 2. So, cancel out. And the final answer, we have f prime of x is equals to negative x squared minus 5 over quantity of x plus 2 squared. So, I'm here to explain the constant rule. Constant rule states that the derivative of a constant is 0. So, number 1, y equals 5. So, so now I'm going to explain each of the constant rule example, so y equals to 5. To find the derivative, we have y prime over uh, y prime d over the derivative of 5. So, and our answer is y prime equals to 0. So, so because as I have stated a while ago, the derivative of a constant is 0 and always be 0. Next is y equals negative 1000. So, y prime over d I, d over derivative of negative 1000 so the answer is y prime equals to 0 and uh, ne the third example is y equals to 0 y prime equals d over the derivative of 0 and the answer is y prime equals 0 power rule if a function is defined by f of x equals x raised to the power of n, where n is any non-zero constant and x is not equal to zero for any given n, then the derivative of f of x is given by f prime of x equals nx to the power of n minus one. So, example number one, y equals x raised to the power of 10. y prime equals d over derivative of x raised to the power of 10. After that, in this, in this solution, the exponent will be replaced a co coefficient and the real exponent will be minus by one. And that's gonna have an answer of y prime equals 10 x to the power, raised to the power of nine. Example number two, y equals negative x raised to the power of two, then y prime equals d over derivative of negative x raised to the power of 2 where the neg the 2 will be negative co coefficient x raised to the power of 2 and minus 1 and that will gonna be answer y prime equals negative 2x example number 3 y equals x after that y prime equals d over derivative of x where x is just 1 
and you are gonna re replace it in a coefficient way and x raised to the power of 1 will be minus 1 and the answer is y prime equals 1 go sum and or difference if f of x equals h of x plus g of x then f prime of x equals h prime of x plus g prime of x if f of x h equals h of x minus g of x then f prime of x equals h prime of x minus g prime of x example y equals x squared plus 4x raised to the power of 4 minus 5 so the solution y prime equals d over derivative of x squared plus d over der derivative 4x raised to the power of 4 plus d over derivative of x negative 5 using the formula of power rule common multiple and constant rule we can get these answers y prime equals 2x raised to the power of 2 minus 1 plus 4 times 4 x raised to the power of 4 minus 1 minus 0 and our answer is y prime equals 2x plus 16 x raised to the power of 3 example number 2 y equals x squared minus x plus 1 our solution y prime equals d over derivative x squared plus d over derivative of negative x plus d over derivative 1 so using the power rule and the constant rule we can get this 2x raised to the power of 2 minus 1 plus 0 plus 0 and our answer is y prime equals 2x example number 3 y equals u raised to the power of negative 3 plus 2u minus 1 our solution y prime equals d over derivative u to the ra raised to the power of negative 3 plus d over derivative 2u plus d over derivative of negative 1 and by using the power rule the constant multiple and the constant rule we can get this and our answer is y prime equals negative 3 u raised to the power of negative 4 plus 2 so today we will talk about constant times function if c is a constant then d over derivative c times f of x is equal to c times d over derivative of f of x example y equals 10x raised to the power of 5 then after that y prime equals d over the, the derivative of 10x to the raised of 5 and then y prime equals 10 d over the derivative of x to the power of 5 then after that we have to bring down the value of our exponent next to that to 10 and my, subtract the exponent by 1 and that will give us the answer of, of y prime equals 50x to the, power, to the raised to the power of power example number 2 we have y equals negative 10x raised to the power of negative 5 after that y prime equals d over the, the derivative of negative 10x raised to the power of negative 5 next y prime equals negative 10 d over the derivative of x raised to the power of negative 5 after that y1 equals negative 10 times negative 5 times x to the raised to the power of negative 5 minus 1 and that will give us the answer of y prime equals 50 x raised to the power of negative 6 example number 3 we have y equals 4x after that y prime equals d over the derivative of 4x after that y prime equals 4 times 1 by bringing down the, the exponent so example number 3 we have y equals 4x 
After that, y prime equals d over the derivative of 4x. After that, y prime equals 4 times 1 by bringing down the exponent and by by subtracting min 1 in our exponent. Y, and that will give us the answer of y prime equals 4. Product rule. Product rule is given the function h of x is equal to f of x times g of x. Its derivative is given by h prime of x is equal to f of x times g prime of x plus g of x times f prime of x. So now we have an example of product rule, which is y is equals to quantity of 3x raised to the power of 4 plus 6 times quantity of 2x raised to the power of 6 minus 4. So before we proceed to the next, we need to get the derivative of f of x and g of x, which is we come up with this answer by using the constant multiple. After that, we have to use the formula that I have said a while ago, which is this. So, all we have to do now is to substitute the value of f of x and g of x and its prime to our, for to our formula and, the and that would give us y prime is equal to quantity of 3x raised to the power of 4 plus 6 times quantity of 12x raised to the power of 5 plus quantity of 2x raised to the power of 6 minus 4 times quantity of 12x raised to the power of 3. After that, we're going to use the distributive property. And then, we come up with this. y prime is equal to 36x raised to the power of 9 plus 72 x raised to the power of 5 plus 24x raised to the power of 9 minus 48x raised to the power of 3. After that, we're gonna combine the like terms. After that, this would be your final answer, which is y prime is equal to 60x raised to the power of 9 plus 72x raised to the power of 5 minus 48x raised to the power of 3. Go. Example number two. Y equals quantity of 4x minus 2 raised to the power of 2. So in this given, we're going to get the binomial method. Uh, we're going to use the binomial method where we're going to get the, the derivative of f of x and g of x where f prime of x is equal to 4 and g prime of x is equal to 4. Then crisscross then this is, will be the answer of this. So, by using the distributive property, we can get this answer too. Then, com by combining the like terms, so our answer are y prime equals 32x minus 16. Example number 3, y equals quantity of 4x cubed minus 3x squared plus 50 minus x times quantity of x squared plus 100. By getting the derivative of these two given, f of x is equal to 4x cubed minus 3x squared plus 50 minus x, and g of x equals x squared plus 100. And by getting it, f prime of x equals 12x squared minus 6x, and the g prime of x equals 2x, then the distributive property and then combining the like terms and our answer are y prime equals 20x raised to the power of 4 minus 12x cubed minus 1198x squared minus 500x. So next is quotient rule. So the first example is y is equal to 2x over x squared plus 1. So, you remember v du minus u dv over v squared. So, this is our u, 2x, and this is our v, x squared plus 1. So, second thing, you find the derivative of u and v. So, the derivative of 2x is 2, and the derivative of x squared plus 1 
is 2x. So, the next, y prime is equal to the quantity of x squared plus 1, since x squared plus 1 is rv, and times the quantity of 2, since 2 is our derivative of 2x, and minus the quantity of 2x, since 2x is our our u and times the quantity of 2x since 2x is our derivative over the quantity of x squared plus 1 raised to the power of 2. Next, y prime is equal to 2x squared plus 2 minus 4x squared over the quantity of x squared plus 1 raised to the power of 2. So here, like terms, you subtract it so the answer is in here in the next equation so y prime is equals to negative 2 x squared plus 2 over the quantity of x squared plus 1 raised to the power of 2 so the answer is y prime is equals to negative 2 x minus 2 over the quantity of x squared plus 1 raised to the power of 2 the next example of quotient rule is y is equals to 1 over 2 x plus 1 so you can also do what you do here in here. Find the derivative of one is equal to zero and find the derivative of two x plus one is equal to two. And this is our u and this is our v. So next is y prime is equal to quantity of two x plus one since two x plus one is our v. And the times the quantity of zero since zero is our derivative in u minus the quantity of 1 because 1 is our u times the quantity of 2 since 2 is our derivative of v over the quantity of 2x plus 1 raised to the power of 2. Next is you need to distribute each one of this and this also. y is y prime is equals to 2x times 0 is 0 and 1 times 0 is 0 and 1 times 2 is negative 2 over the quantity of 2x plus 1 raised to the power of 2 so the final answer is y prime is equals to negative 2 over ta the quantity of 2x plus 1 raised to the power of 2 next example of quotient rule is y is equals to 4x cubed plus 6 over 2 minus 3x so get the derivative of 4x cubed plus 6 is equal to 12x cubed plus 6. And get the derivative of 2 minus 3x, the answer is negative 3. So next, y prime is equal to the quantity of 2 minus 3x times the quantity of 12x squared plus 6. Minus the quantity of 4x cubed plus 6 times the quantity of negative 3 over the quantity of 2 minus 3x squared raised to the power of 2. So use this derivative property and you can get this answer. So y prime is equals to 24x squared plus 12 minus 3x cubed minus 8x plus 12x cubed plus 18x over the quantity of 2 minus 3x raised to the power of 2. Next is y prime. Oh, you need first to cancel like terms and well, subtract the subtract this because they are the same. So next, y prime is equals to 24x squared plus 12 minus 24x cubed over the quantity of 2 minus 3x raised to the power of 2. So the final answer is y prime is equal to negative 24x cubed plus 24x squared plus 12 over the quantity of 2 minus 3x raised to the power of 2. Another differentiation rule is the chain rule. So in order to get the derivative using chain rule, we need to get the derivative of the outside function leaving the inside alone times the derivative of the inside function. So here we have y is equals to 3 over quantity of x squared minus 3 squared. So 
y prime is equals to 3 times the quantity of x squared minus 3 raised to the power of negative 2. Why? Is it because we find the reciprocal of the denominator resulting to this answer. After that, we need to find the derivative of the outside function. So what is the derivative of this outside function? It is... the derivative of this negative 2. So, we multiply negative 2 into 3, resulting 6, negative 6. After that, we leave the inside alone and we subtract 1 from negative 2. So, we have raised to the power of negative 3, multiplied by the derivative of the inside function following the formula, and that is 2x. So after that, we multiply negative 6 and 2x. So we have negative 12x. And after that, since we cannot have a answer that has a negative in the exponent, we put this term as our denominator. So we have negative 12x over quantity of x squared minus 3 cubed. And that is our final answer. So another example, we have y is equals to square root of x squared plus 1. So since we cannot get the derivative using this equation in radical form, we need to make it into its exponential form, which is y prime is equals to quantity of x squared plus 1 raised to the power of 1 half. And again, following the formula, the derivative of the outside function, we have 1 half, leaving the inside alone. And we subtracted 1, so we have negative 1 half and times or multiplied by the derivative of the inside function. So we have 2x and we have the resulting answer y prime is equals to 1 over square root of x squared plus 1. Moving on, we have the last example for chain rule. y is equals to quantity of x cubed plus 4 raised to 5 over quantity of 1 minus 2x squared raised to 3. So we have y prime is equals to 5 times the quantity of x cubed plus 4 raised to 4 times the quantity of 3x squared multiplied by the quantity of 1 minus 2x squared raised to 3 minus quantity of x cubed plus 4 raised to 5 times 3 times the quantity of 1 minus 2x squared raised to 2 times the quantity of negative 4x over quantity of 1 minus 2x squared raised to 3, which is also raised to 2. So following the quotient rule of the derivative, we follow the VDU minus UDV over V squared. So as you can see here, we have V, which is quantity of 1 minus 2x squared raised to 3, multiplied by the derivative of u, which is 5. 5 minus 1, we have it raised to 4, leaving the inside alone, multiplied by the derivative of the inside function, which is 3x squared. After that, we subtracted u dv. So we have x cubed, quantity of x cubed plus 4 raised to 5, multiplied by the derivative of this function, which is 3 times the quantity of 1 minus 2x squared, since 3 here is subtracted by 1, and times the quantity of the inside function, which is negative 4x. And after that, we have v squared, which is quantity of 1 minus 2x squared raised to 3 and also raised to 2. After that, we have y prime is equals to 
quantity of x cubed plus 4 raised to 4 times the quantity of 1 minus 2x squared raised to 2 times 5 quantity of 3x squared times the quantity of 1 minus 2x squared minus the quantity of x cubed plus 4 times 3 times the quantity of negative 4x over 1 quantity of 1 minus 2x squared raised to 6. We have the final answer, y prime is equals to negative 3x times the quantity of x cubed plus 4 raised to 4 multiplied by the quantity of 5x minus 6x cubed plus 16 over quantity of 1 minus 2x squared raised to 4. Go. Now, I'm going to discuss on how to find the derivative of the trigonometric fractions. So now, we have our first example, which is y is equal to secant quantity x squared. We have to find first the derivative of the second, which is secant tangent, and then we're going to input the value of our quantity in between the derivative of the second. And then we're going to find the derivative of our sub quantity, and that will result to 2x. And now our final answer would be y prime is equal to 2x secant quantity x squared tangent quantity x squared. So now we have our second example, which is y is equal to sine squared quantity of 3x. To get its derivative, we have y prime sine quantity of 3x squared because we need to move the exponent from here to the outside of the equation. After that, we're going to have to move the exponent 2 in front to make it our new coefficient, copying down this equation. After that, we're going to have to find the derivative of this sign, which is cosine, copying down the quantity inside. And after it, we're going to have to find the derivative of the said quantity, which will result to 3. And hence, our final answer would be 6 sine quantity of 3x cosine quantity of 3x. So now we have our third example, which is y is equal to cotangent raised to the power of 4 quantity of sine x cubed. To find its derivative, we have y prime cotangent quantity of sine x cubed raised to the power of 4, just like on what we did in the previous example, wherein we move the exponent here on the outside of this equation. After that, we're going to have to move our exponent in front so that we can make our new coefficient, copying down this equation. And after copying it down, we're going to have to find the derivative of the cotangent, which is negative cosecant squared, copying down this equation. After it, we're going to have to find also the derivative of this sign, which is cosine, copying down the x cubed. And finally, we're going to have to find the derivative of the x cubed, and that would be, and or that would give us an answer of 3x raised to the power of 2. After doing so, we're going to have to multiply 4 and 3x raised to the power of 2, and also beware of this negative sign or operation. And that would give us the answer, y prime is equal to negative 12x squared, cosine quantity of x cubed, cosecant squared, quantity of sine x cubed, cotangent quantity of sine x cubed. So our first topic for today is all about higher order derivative. So higher order derivative, let the function of y is equal to f of x, have a fin finite derivative f prime of x in a certain interval. Example number one, determine the fourth derivative of h of t is equal to 3t raised to the power of 7 minus 6t raised to the power of 4 plus 8t cubed minus 12t plus 8 So h of t is equal to, we need to bring down our leading coefficient which is 3 and d over the derivative of x, t, and we need to subtract our exponent by 1. So 7 minus 1. After that, we need to multiply 3 and 7 and copy the variable and the exponent, which is 6. Same goes as here. 
So, 6, D over the derivative of X, T, 4 minus 1. After, we need to multiply 6 by 4 and copy the variable which is T, T and the exponent which is 3. Third, A, D over the derivative of X, T, 3 minus 1. So, we need to multiply 8 by 3 and copy the same variable which is t and 3 minus 1 is equals to 2 minus 12 d over the derivative of x t 1 minus 1 and next is 18 d over dx by using the constant rule 18 will become 0 so 3 times 7 is equals to 21 Copy the variable and the exponent. Minus 6 times 4 is equals to 24. Copy the variable and the exponent, which is 3 of t cubed. Plus 8 times 3 is equals to 24 t squared. Minus 12. After getting the first derivative of this equation, we need to get the another derivative of this to come up with the second derivative. So, same process as here. So, 21d over the derivative of x, t6 minus 1, minus 24d over the derivative of x, t3 minus 1, plus 24d over the derivative of x, T, 2 minus 1. So the result is 21 times 6 t raised to the power of 5 minus 24 times 3 t squared plus 24 times 2 t. Since t is already have an exponent of 1. So our second derivative is 126 t raised to the power of 5 minus 72 t squared plus 48t. So, same process. So, 126d over the derivative of x, t, 5 minus 1, minus 72d over the derivative of x, t, 2 minus 1, plus 48d over the derivative of x, t, 1 minus 1. After, we need to multiply 126 times 5t raised to the power of 4 because 5 minus 1 is 4 minus 72 times 2t plus 48t. So our third derivative is 630t raised to the power of 4 minus 144t plus 48. We need to get the derivative of this equation so that we will come up to our fourth derivative. So same process as here, 630d over the derivative of x, t 4 minus 1 minus 144d over dx t 1 minus 1. So we need to multiply 630 times 4t cube minus 144t. So our, our, our final answer or our fourth derivative will be 2520t cube minus 144. The next example is we need to find the third derivative of f of x equals 5x cubed minus 3x squared plus 10x minus 5. f of x equals 5 times d or the derivative of x, x cubed minus 1, minus 3 times d over d, derivative of x, x squared minus 1, plus 10 times d over the derivative of x, x 1 minus 1. To come up with the first derivative, we need to multiply the leading coefficient and the exponent. So, 5 times 3 x squared, we come up with this exponent because the exponent here, is 3 and we need to subtract 1 minus 3 times 2x we come up with x here because the exponent raised here is 2 and we need to subtract 1 also plus 10 when we don't put x here because the exponent of x is raised to 1 and we minus 1 
So the derivative, first derivative equals 15x squared minus 6x plus 10. To find the second derivative, we need to find the equation. 15 times d over d of derivative of x, x squared minus 1 minus 6 times d over the derivative of x, x. So as what we did here, we need also to multiply the leading coefficient and the exponent which is 15 times 2 x squared minus 1 minus 6 x 1 minus 1 so our second derivative is 30 x because the exponent here is 2 and we subtracted 1 minus 6 since the exponent here is 1 and we subtracted 1 our final derivative is 30 because we use here the constant rule and the exponent of x is equal to 1 and we subtracted 1 so we come up with 30. Next example is find the second derivative of b of x equals x cubed minus x squared plus x minus 1. b of x equals to d over derivative of x quantity of x cubed plus d over derivative of x quantity of x squared plus d over de derivative of x quantity of x plus d over derivative of x quantity of, quantity of negative 1 3 times x raised to the 3 minus 1 minus 2 times x raised to 2 minus 1 plus 1 minus 0 following to the constant rule the first derivative is 3x squared minus 2x plus 1. After that, b of, b of prime of, prime of x equal to d over derivative of 3x squared minus d over derivative of 2x plus d over derivative of 1. After that, b over prime of x equal to 3 times 2x raised to 2 minus 1 minus 2 times 1x raised to 1 minus 1 and the second derivative is 6x minus 2. Optimization is the process of finding the greatest or least value of a function for some constraint which must be true regardless of the solution. In other words, Optimization find the most suitable value for a function within a given domain. Example number one. Find the two positive numbers whose sum is 300 and whose product is a maximum. So first, we find the sum. Sum is equals to x plus y. The, <coughs> the given sum is 300. So 300 is equals to x plus y. So we move the x into the other side. So, y is equal to 300 minus x. So, we find again the product. So, product is equal to xy. That's the formula. So, equals to x quantity of 300 minus x. So, we distribute the x to the 300 and x. So, 300x is minus x squared. Then, we find the derivative of this, of this equation. So, the derivative is 300 and 2x. So, 300 minus 2x is equal to 0. We made this in, in order for it to find the, the product of x. So, we move the negative 2x to the other side. So, 300 is equal to 2x. In order to find the x, we must divide both sides by 2. 300 divided by 2 is equal to 150. So we get the answer of x is equal to 150. So we have the answer of x. So we must move on to the answer of y. In order to get the y, we have followed the formula. So y is equal to 300 and the value of x as we get it here is 150. So 300 minus 150 is 150. Yeah, money answer. The second example of optimization word problem is find two positive numbers whose product is 750 and for which the sum of one and ten times the other is a minimum. The solution is 
Let's combine the x and y. Equal 750. 750 is our product. Sum is s. Let's combine, combine the x and y. x, y equal 750. S, s is sum equal x plus 10. Y. Let put, let's put the y and the 10. X equals 750 over y. The next thing is S quantity of y equals 750 over y plus 10 y. So let's find the S prime. S prime quantity of y equals 7, negative 750 over y squared, a squared of 2 plus 10. And then 750 negative over y squared of 2 plus 10 equal to 0. So let's crush out the 0. And it turns out plus, plus negative squared, squared, uh, squared of 75. And it turns out our y is equal 5 squared, squared of 3. So, so when you... So when you find the x, you need to find the second derivative of sum. Second derivative of sum, quantity of y, equal 1,500 over y3. Then, then it's turned out x equal 750 over 5 squared, squared of 3 equal 50 squared of 3. That's all. So next is related rates. Related rates involves finding a rate at which a quantity changes by relating that quantity to other quantities whose rate of change are known. So problem number one, air is being pumped into a spherical balloon at a rate of 5 cm cubed per minute. Determine the rate at which the radius of the balloon is increasing when the diameter of the balloon is 20 cm. So given is V prime of 1 of T is equal to 5 and the given of <coughs> given and another given is R of D is equal to diameter over 2 is equal to 10 because 20 over 2 is 10. So the formula of related rates is V of D is equal to 4 over 3 pi times the quantity of R of D cube. So V prime of 1 is equal to 4 pi times R squared times R. So 5 is equal to 4 pi times the quantity of 10 squared times R prime of 1. So the answer is r prime of 1 is equal to 1 over 80 pi cm per minute. So now we have our second example of the related rate word problem. A 15 foot ladder is resting against the wall. The bottom is initially 10 feet away from the wall. is being pushed towards the wall at a rate of 1 fourth feet per second. How fast is the top of the ladder moving up the wall 12 seconds after we start pushing? We know that our rate is equal to negative one-fourth and that we need to find the distance. Hence, the formula of the distance is rate multiplied by time. All we need to do is just to, we're going to have to substitute the value of our rate and time over this formula. And that would give us the answer of t. So the end of the ladder has been pushed in 3 feet and after 12 seconds, we must have our x equal to 7. To find y after 12 seconds, we just need to use the Pythagorean theorem with the value of x we just found above. So now we have 2 multiplied by the quantity of 7 and the quantity of negative 1 fourth plus 2 multiplied by the quantity of square root of 176. Or in other words, y prime is equal to 7 over 4 over the square root of 176 minus 7 over 4 square root of 176 and that would give us the answer of 0 0.1319 feet per second. Oh. Ah, welcome to my vlog and start! Yeah.